Hey guys, in this particular video I'm going to be covering a very important proof used for dynamics in circular motion. So let's get started. Let's say we've got a particle traveling in a circular type of orbit right here. And let's say that we wanted to describe its motion in terms of x and y. Alright, so this will be the x-axis right here. And this will be the y-axis right here. As such, this will be the j unit vector of magnitude 1 and this will be the i unit vector of magnitude 1. And not only that, but let's say at any particular time t, our particle which is traveling in the circular orbit is, say, right here. And let's say we wanted to describe the position of our particle using a displacement vector from our origin. And let's call our displacement vector, let's call it capital R. And we know it's a function of time. Right, so even though the magnitude of our position vector will remain constant, the vector itself will change direction depending on where the particle is. Like, for example, if the particle is over here, for example, then our position vector will have the same magnitude, but it will be facing over there. All right, let's see if we can figure out how to describe our position vector using a few more things. We know that if we create an angle theta from our horizontal, we can describe our position vector in terms of it too. And we also know it's going to be a function of time. Alright, I think we're ready to get started. Let's see if we can describe our position vector in terms of theta, i, and j. Also, one final thing to know is because it's circular motion, the magnitude of our displacement vector is going to be a constant scalar, which I'll call r. That's this distance, That's this distance right here. All right, let's get started. How can we describe our position vector in terms of i and j? Well, in order to do that, we just need to make a perfect triangle. We know it's going to look something like this. This is going to be the position vector r. This is going to be theta. Let me just try and show you what I'm doing. It's this right here. That's the triangle I'm drawing. And this is going to be r cosine theta i and this is going to be r sine theta j right and this is just your displacement vector r so in other words your displacement vector r can be rewritten as r cosine theta sorry that's small r the scalar small r times cosine theta and this is going to be r sine theta these should be smaller r's too because you're just dealing with the scalar times by cosine theta to get the distance and the j and i denote the direction all right well, let's say that we now wanted to figure out what the velocity of our particle is. Intuition would tell us that the velocity would be would be roughly in this direction. But let's say let's say we wanted to figure it out. All we need to know is that velocity has been defined as the displacement vector differentiated with respect to time. So this is just going to be d dt times by our displacement vector r, which simplifies down to well, whatever the differential of this is, it's just going to be r theta dot times by sine theta. And it's going to be negative because cosine theta, once differentiated, is minus sine theta. And this is just going to be r theta dot cosine theta. All right, so we seem to be on our way. We've, we've got a good understanding of what our velocity is in terms of i and j. This is our i, this is our j. Let's see if we can figure out what our acceleration is. Well, it's going to be a little bit more tricky. We need to use the chain rule. And note that we have to use the chain rule because theta, as I've discussed before, is a function of time. That's just going to be equal to the derivative of our velocity vector with respect to time which is just going to be the derivative of both of these elements. Well, what's that going to be? That's just going to be minus r theta double dot sine theta minus r theta dot squared cosine theta 
what about in the y direction it's just going to be r theta double dot cosine theta minus r theta dot squared times by sine theta so let's make this clear this right here this this top element is just the derivative of this top element and this bottom element is just the derivative of this bottom element that's just using the chain rule I won't go into details about how to use the chain rule in this particular video although I can make another video later on describing how to do it appropriately alright well so we, we seem to be done now we've got a perfect understanding of our acceleration in terms of theta but let's say we wanted something more than this at the moment this is a little bit messy because there's sines and cosines everywhere perhaps there's a way to simplify it and as it turns out there is all we need to do is create a new coordinate system so let me zoom up on our circle right here we know our particle is right here its origin is roughly around here at the moment, we're using i and j unit vectors to describe its position, but maybe we can do something else. What about if we use this? This is our j unit vector. This is our i unit vector. Let's say we wanted to create a new unit vector. Let's say we wanted to create a new unit vector. Let's call it et, and it's going to be in the tangential direction of our circle. Let's create another unit vector, and let's point it towards the midpoint of our circle, too. So we'll call this unit vector et and we'll call this unit vector en right we've defined them to be in this direction and and i think you'll f and it will make sense that this would simplify our equation right now because as you can tell velocity will always be in et and um your displacement will be more easily um uh defined as well all right well in order to do this let's see if we can figure out how to describe our acceleration in terms of these new unit vectors we've created so this is j and this is i all right. Well, first of all, we just use geometry to figure out how to describe them. We know that this angle is going to be theta, because if we were to continue this point here, we know it. This angle here was theta, meaning that we can create a small triangle here, like we did before. As such, we can say that e n hat is just going to be equal to. Well, what's 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 this distance right here? This is just going to be cosine theta and it's going to be in the negative i direction so it's just going to be negative cosine theta what about this distance this distance is going to be sine theta but it's going to be in the minus j direction so it's going to be minus sine theta right because this top element refers to i and this bottom element refers to j what about et our tangential unit vector well Let's figure out. This can this this triangle can be made right here. And using geometry, we can tell that this is going to be the angle theta right here. As such, what's this at? What's this distance right here? This will be cosine theta. And this will be sine theta. Consequently, the x direction is just going to be sine theta in the minus i direction. So this is going to be minus sine theta. And this is going to be positive cosine theta. All right. Now that we've got new two two new unit vectors, let's see if we can redescribe our acceleration vector. We know we can too. Take a look. If we were to copy down our acceleration vector, which I've written above, let me do that quickly. That's just going to become. Let me copy that down. Hold on, let me just copy this down. It shouldn't take too long. Just going through the... There we are. So this is our acceleration vector right here. Alright, let's see if we can simplify this at all. We know that this can be written as, well, if we factor out the r and the theta double dot, it's just going to be r theta double dot times by minus sine theta and cosine theta that's just the first term what about the second term let's leave the negatives inside we can factor out an r theta dot squared plus r theta dot squared times by minus cosine theta 
minus sine theta. All right, let's try and figure out what this means now. All right, what do we notice? This, this, this right here, as we proved earlier, minus sine theta cosine theta was ET. Right, let me scroll up so you can see. It's, it's this right here, that's ET. What about this one? Minus cosine theta sine theta. What did we discover that was? That was EN. That's EN. So we can replace the two. And let me do that right now. We can replace the two by writing this. Our acceleration vector is now equal to R theta double dot times by ET plus R theta dot squared EN. We're almost done at this point. At the moment, this is much more simplified than it was before, but let's, say if the, let's find out if there's an easier way to simplify this even further. Let's recall that our velocity vector was, and let's try and look it up, our velocity vector was minus r theta dot sine theta. In fact, let me copy it down. This is our velocity vector right here. Let's see if there's a way we can redescribe this in terms of et and en. Well, that was equal to r theta r theta dot sine theta and r theta dot cosine theta. Well, if we factor out the r theta dot, what do we get? We get sine theta and cosine theta. Actually, specifically, it'll be minus sine right here. Well, what do we notice that this is? Well, it's going to be r theta dot et, right? It's in the tangential direction, which kind of like satisfies our intuition too, because our velocity is always going to be in our tangential component, right? And if we're interested, we can take we can calculate the the magnitude of our velocity vector too. So the magnitude of our velocity vector now is just going to be equal to well, it'll be the square root of r theta dot cos uh, it'll be r theta dot minus sine theta all squared plus oops plus r theta dot cosine theta squared oop that bracket should be around here Let's see if I can fix that up real quick. All right. Well, what does that simplify down to? Notice, noticing that sine theta squared plus cosine theta squared is just one. This will simplify down to, as would expect, r theta dot. In other words, the magnitude of our velocity will always be equal to r theta dot. This is a huge formula used in circular motion. This, is, this shows that the magnitude of our velocity vector will always be equal to r theta dot. This is massive. Not only that, another huge formula which you're going to be using is theta dot is often defined to be equal to omega. And this is usually described to be, let me just write it down for you, angular velocity. Let me just write that down. Angular velocity. So that's what omega is. Not only that, but while I'm on this small little rant, let's see if we can define a few more things. Angular acceleration is going to be equal to, and let me write it down for you, angular acceleration is theta double dot, and we denote that by alpha. So in other words, angular velocity is denoted by, denoted by this omega sign, or w, and that's just the derivative of theta with respect to time, and angular acceleration is denoted as alpha, and that's just the double derivative. Consequently, we can write that the magnitude of our velocity vector is just going to be equal to r omega. This is huge. This is a huge formula that will be used later on. Let's see if we can use this to simplify our acceleration vector. All right, let's see if I can get it all on one screen. There we go. There we go. Let's see if we can use this to help us redescribe our acceleration vector. Well, we can rewrite this as r alpha, because we've defined alpha as theta double dot, et, plus, if I times both the numerator and denominator by r, I get r squared theta dot squared 
on our en hat. So that will become r theta, uh, sorry, r alpha et plus, well, what's this r squared theta dot squared is just r omega all squared. So that's just going to become the magnitude of your velocity vector squared over r times by en hat. And we're done. All right. Let me just put a box around that to signify its importance. And that's just going to be equal to our acceleration vector right there. This is hugely important. Basically, the acceleration of any particle traveling around in a circular orbit can be expressed in two main directions. Its tangential component right here, so that so the acceleration is going to be split into its tangential component, component, AT, and its normal component towards the center of the circle, AN. This is huge. Remember in high school when we learned the formula force is equal to mv squared on r, but we never really understood where the formula came from or why it was directed into the middle? This is a formal proof proving that the acceleration must be towards the center of the circle. And I'll go through maybe an intuition video later, but for now this is a very formal proof showing that v is irrelevant of direction. It's only based off the magnitude of it, and this is the formula right here. A n is going to, the magnitude of A n is just going to be V squared on R and it's always going to be pointing towards the midpoint of the circle. In a few videos after this, I'm going to be going through a few example problems, maybe to hammer in this concept a little bit more. Thanks guys.